Hello, my name is Dr. Adam Hyatt and I'm a surgeon at Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster. I also have specialty training in sports medicine and sports surgery and I did a fellowship at the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia specifically to address sports related injuries. The following is a presentation of some of the common sports related injuries that I see in my practice. We'll go over the diagnosis, treatment, and some prevention tips to help you stay healthy in musculoskeletal health. As I said before, I'm excited to be a part of the Lancaster community here at OAL. I grew up in Eastern Pennsylvania, and then from there went on to Pennsylvania State University. After graduating, I went to medical school at Thomas Jefferson University at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. I did my residency training in orthopedics at Rutgers University at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Brunswick, and I did my fellowship training at the Rothman Institute at Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals and had the opportunity to treat many athletes from high school to college age at Villanova University, at St. Joseph's University, as well as interacting and treating professional sports athletes with the Phillies, Flyers, and Eagles. I'm excited to be here at Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster to continue to deliver care to athletes of all ages. Some of the objectives today will be to discuss some common athletic injuries that sports medicine physicians and athletic trainers commonly encounter. We'll discuss treatment options that vary from rest, rehabilitation, anti-inflammatory medications, to surgical procedures. The key with preventing sports injuries is you want to take small steps to avoid some big problems. So how do people get injuries? It can occur in youth leagues, high school sports, collegiate sports, professional sports. Sometimes it depends on what position you play. Why did it happen? Well, it could be for exercise, fun, recreation, or even monetary compensation. But the treatment really depends on you. There's no holy bible of orthopedic care. Musculoskeletal complaints are the number two reason that people seek medical treatment, which is a close second behind upper respiratory infections. More people than ever are involved in athletic play. This means that more people are getting overuse and traumatic injuries. And this talk could be bad for my business. So we could talk about some sports specific injuries, overhead or throwing athletes, such as baseball players, softball players, swimmers, volleyball players, you should think about the shoulder. And contact athletes, such as football, rugby, or cross players, think about everything from the shoulder to the hip to the knee. Think about fractures, sprains, and ligament injuries. Endurance athletes, such as soccer athletes, track, cross country, and basketball, think about overuse injuries, such as tendonitis, cartilage wear, and soreness. And other random athletes like golfers or bowling, think about upper extremity injuries, tendonitis, and wrist pain. Patient-specific sports injuries. In female athletes, think about patellofemoral disorders, disorders of the kneecap, ACL injuries, and ankle sprains. In men, think about fractures or dislocations. In kids, we think about fractures or growth plate disturbances. In middle-aged adults or weekend warriors, think about Achilles tendon ruptures, tendonitis, or patellar tendon ruptures. In the more elderly population or advanced age, think about arthritis, joint soreness, and quadriceps ruptures. It's helpful to go over some definitions so we all are speaking the same language. When your doctor talks about the bursa, he's referring to the specialized tissue, which is a potential sac in the anatomic places where friction occurs to allow smooth, non-irritating motion of one surface over another. An example would be the olecranon bursa over your elbow. When this becomes inflamed, we call it a bursitis. A tendon. This is a cord-like, primarily collagenous structure that links muscle to bone. If inflammation occurs, it's called tendonitis. Tendon degeneration. Degenerative changes are seen in a great majority of tendons, indicating that spontaneous tendon rupture is a typical clinical end-state manifestation of a degenerative process in the tissue. The role of overuse in the pathogenesis of chronic tendon injuries and disorders is really not completely understood. It's been speculated that when a tendon is overused, it becomes fatigue and loses its basal strength. We talk about a watershed area in tendons, and this is an area where blood vessels traveling from each end of the tendon don't completely reach the midpoint, and there's a relative avascularity. Mechanical effects such as abrasion can have implications in tearing of these tendons. When we talk about a ligament, we're talking about a dense connective tissue that links bone to bone. And when your doctor refers to arthroscopy, he's talking about a procedure. This is one where we use a few pinky nail-sized incisions around the joint 
and we're able to look inside with a camera and view it on a screen. We actually inject the joint with water to allow us to see. We then use specialized tools to either repair or remove damaged tissue from within that joint. So why do sports related injuries happen? If viewed as a function of Newton's third law, athletic injury can be described as resulting from an equal and opposite reaction, which in turn is a result in macro or micro trauma. In macro trauma, equal and opposite forces exceed the strength of a specific anatomic structure. In micro trauma, you get smaller traumas from repeated activity, and these can be cumulative. Over time, this can result in inflammation, pain, and dysfunction. Now we're going to talk about elbow, wrist, and hand injuries commonly seen in our clinic. Elbow tendonitis is very common, often referred to as tennis elbow. But athletes are not the only people that get tennis elbow. Many people who participate in work or recreational activities that require repetitive and vigorous use of the forearm such as painters, plumbers, carpenters, are particularly prone to developing, quote, tennis elbow. Studies have shown that auto workers, cooks, and even butchers get tennis elbow more often than the rest of the population. It's thought that the, the repetitive weightlifting required in these occupations leads to injury. The treatment is typically rest, bracing, anti-inflammatories, and time. Sometimes steroid injections for recalcitrant cases or even surgery for people that have long-standing symptoms. Elbow or olecranon bursitis can also occur. It can be traumatic or atraumatic. Typically it's diagnosed clinically. Sometimes you can get an infection which needs to be ruled out. The treatment is typically rest in a splint. Sometimes we aspirate or take off fluid or if it's very large or to rule out an infection. Surgery for this is rare, but indicated if it is infected or recurrent. Hand and wrist tendonitis are some of the most common injuries in athletes as well. De Quervain's tendonitis occurs in the tendons around the base of the thumb when they're irritated or constricted. The swelling of the tendons in the tendon sheath can cause pain and tenderness along the thumb and the side of the wrist. This is particularly noticeable when forming a fist or grasping or gripping something or when turning the wrist. Treatment for this is typically resting, splints, occasionally an injection, or surgical decompression if it does not improve. A mallet finger is an injury to the thin tendon that straightens the end of the joint of the finger or the thumb. Although it's known as a baseball finger, the injury can happen to anyone when an unyielding object, such as a ball, strikes the tip of the finger or the thumb and forces it to bend further than it's intended to go. As a result, you're typically not able to straighten the tip of your finger or thumb on your own. The treatment, if diagnosed early enough, is typically splinting in full extension with a finger brace. Jersey finger is an injury to the flexor tendon that commonly occurs in sports. The ring finger is involved in 75% of cases because it's the longest finger. The ring finger is exposed to a greater average force than the other fingers when you're pulling away. This typically requires surgical repair to maintain function of the digit. A sedentary lifestyle has been proposed as a main reason for poor basal or circulation for tendons and presumably is at least partly responsible for a high number of tendon problems in people with sedentary lifestyles who occasionally take part in high physical or activity sporting demands. Remember, treatment is always patient specific and tailored towards your specific needs. Some final thoughts and resources for you to visit for musculoskeletal related injuries. Overuse injuries and tendon degeneration have been speculated to cause chronic tendon problems by disturbing the micro and macrovascular structure of the tendon, resulting in insufficiency and in local blood circulation. Decreased blood flow simultaneous with an increased activity may result in a decreased oxygen capacity impaired nutrition, and energy metabolism. And together, these factors are likely to play a role in the sequence of events leading up to a specific injury. It's true, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure.